Hi, Dex Gelfand here of Therapeutic Spiritual Counseling. I want to explain something, a concept that is really very important, vital in fact, for everyone who participates in a session with a practitioner and vitally important for the practitioner to understand equally. On either end, it's of prime and equal importance. And it's just this. Stay with your spiritual compass if you are the participant. If you are the practitioner, stay with your participant and their spiritual compass. Exactly what I mean by this is, as I've explained in some of my other talks, the most important thing in accomplishing something meaningful in a counseling session is that you're addressing the relevant material. You're not working from some form or script or chart or levels or anything other than what is actually being presented by the participant through your spiritual compass. Whatever arises to the forefront of attention and interest that is the thing that is going to be most profitable and the only thing that is really appropriate to address. So what can happen in sessions sometimes, uh, let me try and give an example, is uh, the practitioner could be running what, what I call a stubbornly held protective attitude. Um, let's just pull, uh, make one up out of the air. Um, uh, don't get too involved with somebody over the phone, okay, just to make something up that might not be the most real. But anyway, don't get too involved with somebody over the phone. And you're running that on your participant if you're the practitioner, okay. Now, then the participant has, has, has a thought and says it back a little differently as, you know, it, the way I'm thinking of it, it it's like um, uh, don't don't be on a phone when you could actually have some time to see the person face to face because then you will communicate better. Okay, let's say that's what the participant throws out. Now, the participant could be concerned, oh, you know, and sort of say, but not want to uh, misbehave or something like that or, or, or be disobedient to the practitioner and say, and, and have a tendency to just want to go back to the original thought of don't get too involved with somebody over the phone. And uh, that would be a mistake. As a practitioner, your job is to empower your participant so they trust themselves, trust their spiritual compass more in the session and more importantly in life and in their thinking. So anytime a participant throws something out from their spiritual compass, number one, it's going to be most profitable and most helpful to go with whatever comes out now. And if that changes what was happening before or the wording or something, uh, this is actually a wonderful thing. This is great. You're kind of zeroing in on the idea better. And the participant must be encouraged to express such things and not worry about being obedient. Okay? And, and the practitioner, uh, the, the uh, uh, tendency among practitioners sometimes, especially in disciplines like uh, in, my, in my previous experience years and years ago in Scientology is you're really indoctrinated to just stick to the script, stick to the program, you know, and, and uh, what they call auditors in Scientology. There are other examples. It doesn't just apply to Scientology, I'm quite sure. In whatever training some practitioner has, they tend to fall in love with their script and their form and try to stick to it. And if the participant starts to go in a, a little bit different direction, try to bring them back to doing what you had instructed them to do and stay with the script. It's a mistake. Okay? And both the participant needs to understand that and the practitioner needs to understand that. So what's going to work best is just following that stream of consciousness that comes from the participant's own spiritual compass. It's saying, here, this, this is the relevant material now. This is what's going to change things. This is what's going to bring up the energies of the harmful uh, fear and pain and such things so that these will no longer be there and then the participant will be free to be instead of retreating to something, some attitude or our default sort of persona uh, as a defense against this pain and fear. That pain and fear 
is being offered up every time the spiritual compass redirects things a little bit, comes up with a different way of expressing something or goes somewhere. Uh, another example of how this happens in a session is uh, very often in my sessions, the participant will say something like, I don't even remember what the question was. What was the question? And it's very important. The first thing I will say is, well, you know what? What the question was is not as important as where it's taken you now. Wherever it's taken you now is exactly where you need to be. I will let them know what the question was, but only to answer their question, not to bring them back to make sure they're sticking with the subject material precisely of what the question was. It's where that question takes them that's important. And we want, again, to empower our participants. And if you're a participant session with me, uh, my job is to empower you so that you trust yourself, your instincts, your spiritual compass, and go with that more confidently instead of suppressing yourself or uh, submitting to an external source like the practitioner in front of you or people in life. Trust in your spiritual compass. And for the practitioner, trust in that participant's spiritual compass. Empower it, honor it, respect it, because that's what's going to lead to the greatest spiritual liberations, the greatest relief, the greatest restoration of self. And that's what we're looking for. So again, the basic point here is don't worry about the script so much. Don't worry about the form. Don't worry about the steps, the levels, the program for the session, as much as stay with the participant's spiritual compass. Go where they take you. This is exactly the opposite of the prime uh, directives of uh, Scientology counseling or auditing in which you're never supposed to change with the participant, which they call a preclear. No, you must. You must do that. Because if you don't do that, what you're creating is an obedient, uh, trying to behave well person in front of you in a session, which puts them in a different personality altogether, makes them like a, a child who wants approval or something like that. I have seen this so many times with my clients with a Scientology background. Why didn't they fully express what they were feeling? Because they wanted to please the auditor. They wanted to not offend. You know, they wanted to be a good, uh, what they say in Scientology, PC. Now, don't be a good patient. Do not be a good participant in a session. Please. Okay, you, if you want to be a good participant, stick with what's on your mind. Follow the stream of consciousness of your spiritual compass and do not worry or restrain yourself because you feel you might be going beyond or to the side of what the practitioner asked of you or directed you to. Never let that stop you. Never let that take you in the wrong direction. Practitioners, your job is to empower the person in front of you. You've got to show and actually have trust in that person's expression of their spiritual compass so that they can. That's your job. That's my point, short and sweet, and I hope from both sides everyone fully takes that. It applies in life as well as in a counseling session, of course. Trust yourself. Trust your spiritual compass. Be confident. Thank you.